Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game. Welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore with our beautiful, sparkling chameleon prince, Mr. Karma, or Claude, as we have come to know him. And we got married to him in the best ending, and it was delightful. And I'm doing soul searching still. So while I'm on my soul searching journey, we are going to do his good ending today, which means picking all the opposite choices we did the first time. So, we're starting in chapter one, and the first time we used our sword, but this time we are going to use magic. And Lucette says this out, lo out loud in front of his face. I do have one easy way of gaining an upper hand. Maybe I will not win, but... I smile at him. You've forgotten one very important thing, Claude. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. Ooh. I am a witch, and you are not. You wouldn't. Claude's sword slides past mine with enough force to make my blade loose in my hand, but my grip no longer matters. My taunt has temporarily caught Claude off guard, giving me enough time to concentrate on my magic. Ice begins to gather on my fingertips. Claude rushes me again with his sword, just as I hold up my hand to cast my spell. I aim the ice at his feet. Sorry, boo. When the whiteness clears, my ice has accumulated at the ground, turning the vibrant green blades of grass into fragments of powdered white. But Claude is nowhere to be seen. What? I feel the cold tap of a blade against my shoulder. <laughs> Before I can turn in place, I feel an arm around my waist and lips close to my neck. I can feel Claude's breath on my skin when he laughs. <laughs> Cheaters never prosper, darling. Y you told me to best you in whatever way that I could. Claude responds by moving his lips down to the nape of my neck and planting a soft kiss there. I stumble away, my fingers tight on the grip of the sword. Claude raises an eyebrow at me and grins. Perhaps if you hadn't warned me about your magic in advance, you might have won. Though even had you won, it wouldn't have been a very fair victory. I hold out my sword once again, but too late. Claude has already closed in on me again, his blade at my neck. He knows me too well. The moment I become flustered, I lose all my concentration. He grins at me, triumphant. Really, though? You should have admitted defeat much earlier. He moves the edge of the blade away from my neck and leans forward to brush his lips against my ear. The rest of his words come in a whisper. There is no besting me, love. I can predict your every movement. Ah, oh, I know when I am beaten, and to fight any more would be futile. I pull my arm away from Claude with a groan. Oh, I almost had you. Almost, but not quite. Uh, <laughs> uh, skip? Okay. You almost had him that time, princess. Garland looks at Claude and shakes her head. Her? Her? His? His. A victory this close to the princess's birthday would have been a good gift. I would refuse such a victory. What is the point if I do not earn it myself? Claude grins. Spoken with all the pride of a knight. You see, Garland, she would never accept such a thing. Alright. Uh, let's do fast forward now. We're gonna name it after me. Alright! Lilies are your favorite fla flavor. Favorite flower! <laughs> Maybe we should put a lily on top of the chameleon's head. Or remove the chameleon. Hmm. Was it Claude's idea to have the chameleon there? <laughs> it was. He said it was symbolic. That since the drink represents you, he had to have something symbolic for him on the glass too, since the two of you are inseparable. That sounds like something he would do. I like the idea of putting a lily on the chameleon's head. That sounds super cute. All right, this time I'm gonna get a lot closer to my future brother-in-law, I guess. 
His smile lengthens into something even more dazzling as he grips my hand and pulls me to my feet. I have done a terrible thing, knocking over a beautiful lady. Is there anything I can do to apologize to you? You can let go of her hand. Oh, jealous Claude. Claude appears suddenly behind Lance, his expression mired with a scowl. Lance releases my hand immediately. I knocked her down, so I... Yes, yes, I know. The usual story. This is what happens when one is clumsy. Awkward. Okay, this time I'm gonna stick with what I know best. An ice spell is always a safe spell. I wonder what happened to that rose she made. We never did find out uh, the fate of that rose. I scoot my chair back so that I have some space in front of me. Then I extend my arms and concentrate on the flow of magic beneath the surface of my skin. It took me a while to master this concentration, but after two years of practice I have become quite adept at basic magic. I gather the ice at my fingertips slowly but surely. Lance is staring with wide eyes while Claude looks on with a strangely mischievous smile. Uh, I'm getting nostalgic already. Nostalgic? Lisette has tried more than a few times to best me in sword fighting with her ice. I begin to form the ice into a shape with my fingers. She never wins when that happens, of course, because cheaters. I turn and hold the object out, pointing it at his chest. Did she make an ice sword? Because if so, that is awesome. A sword crafted out of ice extends from my fingers, frozen in front of Claude's chest. Never prosper. Oh. An ice sword! Oh, this is definitely new! It has a surprising amount of detail. What do you mean, surprising? <laughs> Get hecked, Rod. Claude grins at me before putting his fingers to the edge of the blade and lowering it from his chest. How very charming. It would not be so charming if I ran it through your heart. Lance stares at me in shock, but Claude just laughs. <laughs> I don't think having my heart broken by my fiancé would be so terrible, so long as you can mend it for me again. The two of us exchange a smile before Claude leans down to inspect the sword. It would be a shame to have such a beautiful sword get chipped in practice, though. I shake my head and lower the sword. The ice is already beginning to magically melt, crumbling back into small flakes. Beauty is, as they say, ever so fleeting. So they say. Alright, this time I will not interrupt a song. I think I would like to hear the song through to its denouement. I will wait. I situate myself by the door so I can give myself a better vantage point. Claude continues to play for a long time, his fingers effortlessly gliding across the keys. I can tell by the way he stares at the keyboard that he is lost in the music and does not realize that I am there. It is only when his eyes begin to wander to the music sheet in front of him that he loses focus and notices me. At first there is surprise on his face and then a gentle smile. Much to my relief, he does not stop playing. His eyes stray from me again as he continues to study the music sheet. Seeing him so involved in the music makes my heart lighter. Whatever melancholy I sense from him before is gone when he plays. This time is important to him. I wouldn't want to end it abruptly. You're so quiet, Lucette. Starstruck by my playing, are we? Maybe. Though I believe my skill with the piano is equal to yours. Oh, is that so? <laughs> Claude chuckles as he pulls his hands away from the piano keys. The music stops abruptly, and the room is awash in a serene silence. I consider moving to sit beside Claude, but then he has already scooted to the edge of the seat. He sets his arm down on the piano and angles his head slightly, smiling mischievously. I feel like a criminal caught in the middle of a crime. A criminal? Playing without an audience always makes me feel that way. 
Especially when my audience pretends to be invisible. I didn't want to disturb your practice. I look at him, curious. I haven't heard this song before. I wanted to see if I recognized it, but it was unfamiliar. I wonder if this is a song he learned back in Brigantia. Aww. No, it's a song for you, girl. Alright. Once again on the Lance train. Princess, you don't need to go out of your way to offer assistance. He shifts uncomfortably in his chair. Once again, I am surprised by his discomfort. I always assumed Lance spoke to people with just as much ease as Claude. He attracts so much attention, I assumed that he was used to crowds. I am offering because I have experience, and because I may be able to provide some assistance. Half of the reason this obligation now rests on Lance's shoulders is because of me, after all. Princess, that is very kind of you. He smiles gently. I would most definitely appreciate your help. Thank you. And in exchange, I... He looks at me at a loss. Is there anything you would request of me? You told me earlier today that you would tell me more about Claude after performing magic for you. Oh! Well, if you want embarrassing childhood stories, I am more than happy to oblige. <laughs> Lance laughs. It is such a carefree and happy sound that I cannot help but laugh with him. <laughs> it is a deal, then. Aww. Embarrassing stories. But maybe my very close boo doesn't want embarrassing stories told. And now we're gonna try and ruin the surprise, but I'm sure he'll come along anyway. You're busy enough as it is, aren't you? I won't be gone long. But Lucette! No buts. I smile at him. What is it that you always say? Distance makes the heart grow fonder? I retract that statement. Distance is a small torture. There is no need for dramatics. I should be back within a few hours. I'll see you then, Claude. Oh, now he's got to have to magic his himself over there. Claude and I part after that. Once alone, I continue my trip down the corridor and out toward the gates. And she didn't question the carriage not coming for her. She just started walking. I was close to the march and when I stop hearing a conversation that piques my curiosity. Okay, we're going to hear this conversation without the aforementioned Miss Karma uh, next to us. Uh, skip? Okay. We really didn't have much more to say. I'm so lost in my own shock that I do not notice when someone steps out of the crowd and takes my hand. Claude's lips are curved into his usual mischievous smile. Surprise, Lucent. I thought you were working on plans at the palace. Were being the key word. He winks at me. I step back, my cheeks slightly flush as I take in the sight around me. Oh, thank you, my sparkly boy. I present to you Lucette's special drink, the lily! There is a round of applause followed by some murmuring. I notice, upon further inspection, that the chameleon topper on the drink now has a small lily placed on its head. Adorable. Oh, it's adorable! But... Is there a reason there's a chameleon on it? I'm going to assume that represents a certain spoiled princeling. How rude. Well, I still think it's precious. Because chameleons are precious. Mm. There is never a dull moment in this place, is there? Not at all. It's pretty cute. All right. This one, this one, this one. I don't know which is the lesser of two evils. <laughs> Continue to go on the brother-in-law train or start early with the whole Chevalier thing. You know what? 
Chevalier, you're coming up next. We're gonna start getting used to you. Why wouldn't he be? You've made a name for yourself in the last few years. Chevalier glances between Claude and Lance briefly before smiling. My apologies. You shouldn't judge a book by its cover, as they say. That is the point of Beauty and the Beast. Lance looks obviously confused, but he only laughs off his discomfort. <laughs> but thank you. Both of you. Chevalier smiles at Claude smugly. Why are you scowling, your highness? I didn't say something to offend you, did I? Your very presence offends me. You two have quite the dynamic, don't you? Well, you know, they dated ever so briefly. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> you know how it'd be. Okay, so now I'm doing this without uh, Claude's involvement. I was able to find a time during Claude's classes that worked for both Lance and I to get together. I suggested a time just past two in the afternoon, which is why we are both here now. Doing this when Claude is in class feels like we are doing it behind his back. Yeah. I stifle a sigh as I watch Lance stutter over his words. But in the end, I offered to help him, and because Lance was uncomfortable with Claude being here, this is the time we settled on. I focus my attention on him. Try it again, but this time look me in the eyes. Lance's posture becomes stiffer as he fixes me with a solemn gaze. And so this brings me to the subject at hand, my dear people. Now we must speak of a truly momentous occasion. The crowning of the next Brigantian king. Lance's gaze is rigid as stone. I know that this ceremony is of the utmost importance. Why are you glaring at the audience? I... Was I glaring? You were. Lance lets out a sigh. Oh. He falls back into his chair and crosses his arms. Father has a way of making his sternness seem regal, but when I try to be serious, I end up looking too rigid. Perhaps you should work on your expression in the mirror. And... I move to stand in front of him. I square my shoulders and stand as rigidly as I possibly can. The posture is so uncomfortable, I am not even sure how Lance manages to stand like this for so long. This is how you were standing. You look like you are overcompensating for your lack of confidence with a formal stance. Ugh. It probably does not help that you are speaking just to me. Lance sighs as he stands. <sighs> okay, I'll try it again. We have been practicing for the last 20 minutes. Lance has the lines of his speech memorized, but his delivery is lacking. He either gets embarrassed speaking to just me, or lacks the confidence to look both dignified and at ease. Lance has just begun speaking again when the door to the dining room opens and Claude steps inside, startling us both. Isn't he meant to be in the middle of a lesson right now? Claude stares between the two of us, his expression deadpan. Karma! You're out early. How did your lesson go? It was the same as always. He begins to walk toward us slowly. Something in his gaze is dark, on edge. Is something wrong? He stops just beside us, his expression still rigid. I would hope not. Though I am curious, what is happening here? Lucetta's helping me practice my initiation speech. I'm terrible at it. The whole thing. Being kingly is... difficult. Claude does not respond, only continues to look at Lance with that irritation still scrawled on his face. Oh boy. Um, what did I- I think I interjected last time. Let me just double check. Um, yes, I did. It is not my business to say anything. Whatever problems they have between the two of them should be worked out between them. 
I... I apologize. Why are you apologizing? What happened to your backbone? Why are you allowing me to walk all over you? <laughs> Say something! Lance looks at him distraught. Is... something wrong, Karma? Something is definitely amiss, but I cannot imagine what it is. That question is unnecessary. This is about you, not me. Alright. Ooh, something dark and on edge, huh? The beast still lurks within. And now I'm not gonna trust him, I'm gonna speak for him. Claude is uncharacteristically silent. Automatically, I find myself filling the silence with words. Even in this case, if Claude were to make a decision on his own, it would mean passing judgment on the witches without seeking a more nuanced opinion. The Great War was started by people jumping to conclusions, wasn't it? The king turns his attention to me, but says nothing at my interruption. Claude, on the other hand, is looking at me with a disgruntled look on his face. What? Was my opinion not valid? I start to justify what I mean when Claude interrupts me. A good observation, darling, but you can let me handle the rest of the explanation. The king stares between the two of us quietly. Belatedly, I realize why Claude is irritated. Of course. The king is testing him, not me. Now is not the time to help him. My silence must unnerve Claude, because after a brief second, he smiles. Rest assured, the Lucette. I was actually going to use the Great War to back up my argument. What argument? And we are back. Oh no, his words made you falter, but what's the words? What are the words? Okay, so that's still a thing. How impressed we were. Claude's words make me falter. At a loss for words, I see. I will admit that your performance was... satisfactory. Oh, darling, you wound me. You ought to have more faith in me. I do have faith in you. And I... apologize for interrupting. Hmm. If that's the case, you could make it up to me. Maybe start by thawing the ice at my feet. This is not at all related to what just happened. Just so you know. Alright. Chess this time. But Lucette! I cannot imagine why you would play with an audience in the first place, but there should be no problems that the two of you play with just each other. But Lucette, an audience is always necessary. I agree. Victory is no fun unless you have an audience there to witness the loser's defeat. The two men glare at each other. I stifle a sigh. Fine. If I am not enough of a witness, then we will have Rod and Emmeline there as well. Fine. But no cheering allowed. I have no complaints. I accept your challenge. Now I just somehow need to convince Rod and Emmeline to be there. Alright, so Rod and Emmeline instead of Garland and Jurian. Or not Jurian, I think only Garland was there. Um, log. Okay, so we talked about shirking responsibilities. Oh, then what if you were helping my brother with his lessons? Why was that a secret? It was not a secret. It just never came up in discussion. I have to force myself to look at him confidently. Even I cannot help but feel that I am making excuses for myself. Perhaps keeping this promise is harder than I thought. Claude just stares at me skeptically. After a few moments, I sigh, defeated. <sighs> Fine. I am sorry. But at least that secret does not impact my mood so severely. Okay, well that's a little unfair <laughs> to say. I stand up and walk toward him. 
There was a time when I felt those same things. My life was plagued by jealousy and homesickness. I moved to sit beside him on the bench. When Dolora cursed me two years ago, I had thought my life was over. I may have had an empty life in the palace, but it was still my life. I had been accustomed to playing my role, to living my life. And then suddenly that was all taken from me. Though I never voiced the opinion aloud, I was always jealous of Emmeline, who had taken my spot. That's true, I never thought about that similarity between you two as well. Even before then, the townsfolk always spoke more fondly of her than they did of me. I... feared that she was trying to steal my crown, even then. <laughs> I meant to make him feel better by sympathizing with him, but now he looks even sadder. Suffice it to say, I felt the same way back then that you do now. The circumstances were different, and the lifestyle change was not a choice, but... I smile at him. I know how you're feeling regardless, so I can sympathize. It wasn't until you started sympathizing with me that I had to come to terms with those feelings. You've always been more honest than I have, Lucette. Even now you put me to shame. <sighs> Some habits are hard to break. Yes, but once you try to make an effort to break them, you'll find that you're better off without them. Besides, I stand up from the bench to look at him. Besides, we're not stopping for the cupcakes this time. I sigh as I take Claw's arm and pull him forward. <sighs> Claw glances back at the cupcakes with clear longing in his eyes. Ah, oh, so close yet so far. Pouting will do you no good. Besides, do you really want to lose to your brother? Claw turns away from the stand with a scowl. Of course not. Much to my relief, he slides his arm out of my grasp and begins to stride forward on his own, making it much easier to move. I follow after him, glad to see him finally taking this seriously. Eventually, the two of us reach our destination. Claude agreed to meet Lance in the dining hall along with Emmeline and Rod, who are both sitting there now with him. The three are immersed in conversation when we enter. The steps are a lot faster in the Brigantian style of the dance. <sighs> too fast? It's almost impossible not to trip over my own two feet. How am I supposed to learn this in time for the wedding? <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I'd be more than happy to be your dance partner during the wedding, Princess Emmeline. I wouldn't mind if you stepped on my feet. Uh-huh. Lance's mask is confirmed. I used to step on people's feet all the time practicing the same dance, after all. But I'd feel terrible! Um, it really isn't too hard, so long as you keep your eyes on your partner. How am I meant to do that when I have no idea where my feet are? This wouldn't happen to be the dance that you are helping Emmeline with, Lance. The three look up as we enter the room. Lance narrows his eyes abruptly at Claude. The two brothers eye the elaborate chessboard already set up on a table. It is. Lance is helping me learn it for the wedding. She glances at Lance, but his attention is already focused on Claude. You're late. Impossible. We didn't even stop for cupcakes. Sorry. Lisette and I were at the merchant discussing some important proposal with two witches and a fairy. He smiles smugly at his brother as he takes the seat right in front of him. Both Emmeline and Rod rise to sit further down the table, where I have already taken the liberty of seating myself. Oh man, I haven't heard this piece of music in a long time. It's like the temperature suddenly decreased in here. They're very competitive, aren't they? Perhaps to a fault. They are like two bickering children. Both men are staring at each other with grim expressions on their faces. They look like two war generals on the opposite side of a battle. This is all very anticlimactic, isn't it? I would have preferred sword fighting. 
Of course you would have, because you prefer the easy win. You can't stand to lose. Me lose? I rarely lose. Oh, right, because you're perfect. <laughs> the two men begin their game with severe frowns. I glance briefly at Emmeline and Rod, who watch quietly. Rod looks unimpressed, while Emmeline looks more worried than anything else. She leans toward me and whispers, It's strange to see Lance like this. I look more closely at Lance, who seems eclipsed by some dark aura as he moves his pieces. He never peels his solemn gaze away from Claude, who looks immeasurably uncomfortable. Aren't they being too serious about this? Apparently, challenging someone to a game of chess is a very serious thing in Brigantia. <laughs> I don't know. This seems very similar to when you and Rod are trying to show each other up and dancing. Still, huh? Dancing requires far more focus. He looks at me pointedly. Though I can at least say I have better focus than Lucette because I am the superior dancer. I narrow my eyes at him. Just you wait, Rod. I will make you swallow those words. We'll have Sebi there to judge next time. Is it sad that I want this to happen? Sebi is hardly a good judge. He will always call you the better dancer just to get on my nerves. And because he has good taste. Perhaps we should have brought Sebi here to lighten the mood. Not a bad idea. Claude looks up, irritation flashing through his eyes. Can you three keep it down over there? I can hardly focus on my strategy with all this background noise. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Excuse me. Lance smirks as he moves a piece up a square and knocks one of Claude's pieces off the board. <laughs> you fiend! Sir William was just a young man. Lance sighs as he sits back in his chair. Oh. Claude leans over the board with a grumble. You are a brittle commander, Llama. In a real war, your men would be dead. They're chess pieces. You remember what father used to say? Treat the chessboard like a battlefield. Know that the men who serve you are just as loyal to their true king. Have you forgotten? I haven't forgotten anything. Lance leans forward to move his piece after Claude. As the match goes on, it becomes more and more apparent that Lance is slowly taking over the board. Claude watches in sullen silence. What's wrong? Has my imminent victory left you at a loss for words? Claude just grunts in response as he moves another one of his pieces. Were this a battlefield, you would be sacrificing far too many soldiers. This is a chessboard. Your technique is surprisingly savage. Lance glares at him. Perhaps we should have fought with swords. At least then I would have been able to knock some sense into your thick skull. Emmeline and Rod stare at Lance in shock. Lance finishes the game when he takes Claude's king. He is still grimacing, though, his face flushed with anger. Checkmate. And there we have it. The expected outcome. Hmm, I don't know about that. Claude gestures at the Stolen King. You may have taken my crown, but that doesn't mean you know how to wear it. How you win is just as important as the victory. What is that supposed to mean? If this were a real battle, that crown would be meaningless. Bought with too much sacrifice. Claude shakes his head. So you see, I may have lost, but I at least have more of a king's sensibilities. You always twist the outcome to your favor, don't you? You're condescending when you win and hostile when you lose. Me? Hostile? I hardly get as riled up as you do. Don't act so innocent now. Lance stands from the table, his cheeks flushed. You're always like that. 
Always putting on a facade and pretending to be the good older brother, when all you really do is berate and criticize me. And even when I call on you to help or assist me, you refuse. When I try to be considerate, you call me weak. And you always, always have to compare the two of us to boost your own ego. Just because I can't be as good as you. He pauses suddenly, his posture stiff, and then he abruptly steps away from the table. Thank you for the game. He begins to stride away, eyes flashing with anger. I notice that his hands are balled into fists as he passes us by and makes his way toward the door. What just happened? Lama just expressed his true feelings. I think. He has a habit of not showing them until he's angry. This has always been how I've gotten him to speak with me. Should we go after him? That doesn't seem like it would be the best idea. It's obvious he wants space. Most of the men I know keep to themselves when they are irritated, Claude included. But from my experience with Claude, I also know that talking about your problems is the better solution. I rise from my chair. Be that as it may, I am still going to go after him. Rod has a point, actually. Usually, when Lance walks off like this, he needs time to him by himself to reflect. What happens when you follow him? He thinks I'm trying to antagonize him. Suffice it to say, it usually doesn't end well. Maybe he will be more receptive to me, then. Because I am not you. Him, perhaps. I'm going to go search for him. You can come join us when you're ready to speak with him. Fine. I'll catch up with you after I clean up the board, Lucette. Would you like us to tag along, Lucette? She definitely doesn't need our help, Em. But Prince Lance... He's fine. Rod speaks curtly enough that Emmeline stops speaking, but she still looks at me worriedly. I hardly think he would appreciate such a large audience to his woes. I'll call on you if I need any assistance. Alright then. Rod and I will be here if you need us. I nod and turn toward the door as I make my way outside. Alright man, let's chitty chat again. You and me. And I'll dismiss your apology this time instead of scolding you like you deserve. You do not need to apologize, Lance. I think more than anything, everyone is just worried about you. Oh? Well, it doesn't seem very like you to suddenly lash out at people. Oh. This has always been how Claude and I solve our problems. <laughs> not very sensible, is it? No, but I do not think people would hold it against you. I just think that them seeing you so uncharacteristically angry would make them worried. Oh. It is never my intention to worry other people. That's why I prefer to say nothing at all. And yet the Brigantian blood running through my veins compels me to challenge my brother when I am annoyed with him. He knows exactly how to push my buttons. I still believe that if you have a problem with your brother, you ought to tell him outright. It will only cause everyone else to worry if you hide things. Claw definitely worries me when he keeps secrets. Alright. We'll skip. There should be something different here. We don't have the cupcake. Unless he went out for a cupcake. So either the cupcake scene didn't happen, or he just went out and got another cupcake. Um, let's say I cannot remember. You're not even going to try, darling. I'm sorry. It must not have been very memorable advice. Ouch! I was hoping that would be less painful than the kindness one. I was hoping, like, just admitting, oh, I don't know, you know, it was two years ago. Instead of being like, kindness? Darling, your words stab me right in the heart. I roll my eyes at his dramatic sigh. 
<sighs> anyway, allow me to refresh your memory. I gave you advice pertaining to beauty because I valued it far more than I valued a great many other things. Right. Um, let's look at the log. Alright, so they got married, and now we're in chapter, whatever chapter six is. The new chapter six. And that is why, come what may, my promise to you will always hold firm. I will always be dedicated to you, the people of Brugantia above all else. The atmosphere in the room is relaxed as Lance finishes up his speech. The soft silence that had been the backdrop of his speech breaks apart when we all applaud. It was perfect, Lance! Lance bends down into an elegant bow and smiles at her. Well, I had a good teacher. Emily puts her hand on her chest and smiles sheepishly. Wait, she was helping you all along? Why did you need me? But I only just listened. Lance's eyes seem to sparkle when he looks at her. Having someone around who knows how to listen is incredibly valuable. Emmeline's only response is a blushing smile. In the end, I found out that Emmeline offered to listen to Lance's speech in exchange for his helping her learn that Brigantian dance. Ah, clever. Apparently, the trade worked. Emmeline and Lance danced together at the wedding, and it seems that Lance has improved his speech by performing it for Emmeline. Lance puts a hand on his hip as he glances at Claude. Yay or nay? Hmm, you pass. You didn't look as stiff as a board, and your smile was subdued. At least I know how to memorize my speeches. Claude waves a hand dismissively at him. Spontaneity is not a bad thing. It just means I know how to improvise. He winks at me. Besides, Lucette is excellent at memorizing things. We're unstoppable when we give speeches together. Or maybe you could learn to actually sit down and memorize what you need to say. Darling, do you really have so little faith in me? My only response is a too, -wheat, too sweet smile. Too sweet? When I turn back to Lance, that smile has become gentler. It was a great speech, Lance. I'm sure you'll make your father proud. Thank you, Princess Lucette. Oh! He smiles a little awkwardly. How many times? I mean, thank you, uh, Lucette. Lance is still having difficulty not using titles for my siblings and I. He is technically my brother-in-law now. Sorry to cut in, but it's almost noon, isn't it? Oh, right. Lance gives another bow and smiles. I'm going to head back to my room and make sure the servants have taken care of my luggage. I'll meet you all at the gates in ten minutes. He excuses himself before the rest of us can follow after him. <laughs> Rod eyes is disappearing back with clear suspicion. What is it, Rod? He glances at Emmeline and shrugs. Uh, it's nothing. He sighs as we all leave the dining hall. <sighs> it ain't nothing if you're sighing about it. The palace is bustling at this time of day. Servants walk through the halls, carrying utensils in preparation for lunch. Rod and Emmeline have already gone on ahead of us. Emmeline seems eager to meet Lance at the gates first, and Rod mentioned that he had some quick errand to run before meeting us. I notice a few servants heading to the gates with luggage and figure they must be the men Lance was referring to. It'll be strange not to have Lance here anymore. Lost in thought, are we? Claude's voice startles me from my thoughts. I was just thinking that this is the closest I've seen you and Lance since he's visited. Because we're not at each other's throats. I poke his shoulder. Exactly that. It's been nice seeing you two get along. Rivals we may be, but Lance and I are brothers. We always make up. We're close that way. I was beginning to have my doubts, but I am glad. I smile at him as we continue toward the gates. 
Emmeline and Lance are already there when we arrive. The two of them face each other at the carriage doors. You're welcome to visit whenever you like, Emmeline. I'm sure father and mother would love to have you. Oh, I'd love to visit! After all the stories you told me about Brigantia, I can't help but think it must be a magical place. Magical in a different way from Angiel. I think you'd enjoy it. He pauses, looking thoughtful for a few moments. I suppose I have to introduce you as my sister-in-law's... stepsister? <laughs> that sounds like a mouthful. Sister will do just fine. Lance's expression seems to crumple into something more sullen. You know, it really is a shame that you are... <laughs> Brother's coming in to save the day. What's a shame? Rod, who had been hovering by the gates watching the two of them, steps up to the carriage with his eyebrows raised. Oh, it's nothing. Lance smiles softly and says nothing else. Lance pauses to turn to Claude and me as we approach the carriage. Oh, there you are! Karma, Lucette. He takes a step forward and clasps Claude's hand in his. Bro, bro. He shakes it firmly with a bright smile. I expect you to listen for news of my speech. I can assure you that people will be praising it all over the realm. Claude looks back at him, amused. I'll hold you to that standard then, and if anything less happens, I'll be severely disappointed. Don't worry, Karma. I'll make sure that my speeches make yours pale by comparison. And how can my speeches pale by comparison when I'm naturally charismatic? Oh? I think Lucette would be more suited to giving speeches than you. Hmm. Well, I can't argue with you there. If you challenged me to a speech competition, I would no doubt win. Lucette has an eloquence in wit the little of us possess. And even more impressive, she has the strongest, most competitive heart I've seen. And... Lance pulls his hand away and holds it up as if to bar Claude from speaking. Yes, yes, I've heard it all before. You've already told me many things about her. Days worth, in fact. I could never run out of things to say about my lovely queen. You mean, wife? Wife is so underwhelming. If I were to call you anything along those lines, I would much rather say... My heart, or maybe my other half, or... I put my fingers to his lips to silence him. If you talk much longer, Lance will never leave. I notice that the carriage has already been prepared. Lance is to ride through the main plaza before heading out the city gates and back to Brigantia. Ever the flatterer. Same goes to you. Lance takes a step back toward the carriage doors, but then pauses again to look back at us. I'm looking forward to it. To working with you two, I mean. We may not be seated on thrones now, but once we are... Well, I look forward to the competitions. Let us all promise to inspire each other through friendly competition going forward. It's, it's a, a promise. promise. Claude says the words at the same time I do, though I can't help but turn away with a scowl when he grins at me. Wait, why is everything related to the crown suddenly a competition? Claude and Lance eye each other with mirrored confidence. I'll be expecting good things from you, Lana. You too, Karma. And... He turns to me with a gentle smile. Once things settle down and you have the time... Please, do come visit Brugantia, Lucette. I know you can never be there for long, but I'm certain everyone would appreciate your presence there very much. All they have right now are rumors of a beautiful and refined crowned princess of Angeal. I will try my best to visit when I can, then. Lance turns to Emmeline and Rod. And Rod, Emmeline. You're always welcome to visit whenever you'd like, so please do. 
He takes a step into the carriage and then turns and winks. And do right. I'll be terribly offended if you don't. Of course, his farewells are just as dramatic as his brother's. And just as sparkly. After we all say our goodbyes, Lance enters the carriage and disappears from sight. The large, elaborate carriage trundles away slowly. Emmeline and Rod leave first. The two of them engage in some quiet conversation that I cannot hear. Emmeline looks equal parts thoughtful and sad, while Rod appears almost quizzical. They got relationships to sort out. Claude and I stand there for a few moments longer, watching the carriage disappear into the crowded plaza. Even here, people love Prince Lance of Brigantia. Once it is out of sight, Claude turns to me and takes my hand. He plants a kiss on the back of it. Shall we go, my lovely queen? I clasp my hand in his and lean on his shoulder. Yes. Let's go, Claude. The two of us walk back toward the palace together. Alright, what's this one called? It's a llama! But what's the achievement called? There it is. Drama llama! <laughs> Stop, please, killing me. Drama llama, oh no. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> well, if I thought the best ending had a lot of lance, that had even more lancery going on. Goodness gracious me. I liked the farewell, but it was just way more lands focus so the best ending was definitely the best ending out of the two for me at least we had a nice cinderella dance and i realized after the fact that it was just perfect that the two of them were dancing because it's just like the end of the beauty and the beast movie where the beast and bell are dancing at the end of the movie so i liked that parallel i didn't think of it at the time but realized it after the fact so that was really nice but there you go. That was Claude's good ending. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was really good. So much brother stuff. My goodness, I was unprepared. <laughs> but I really enjoyed myself and I've got soul searching to do between him and Rod for sure. Anyway, that means we are done with this delightful game again for a little while. And we are going back to Doki Doki Literature Club Plus where we are going to be doing Natsuki and Monica's side story. A very interesting pairing indeed, so it should be fun. Hopefully I'll see you over there, guys. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I will see you later.